Hey guys, welcome to my kind of redo tutorial for my uh, automated st uh, seed uh, blah blah blah, whatever. Guys, restart. Hi, welcome back to my uh, Feed the Beast tutorials. This is Calor11 and I am in a crash landing test world. This world is, and this tutorial is going to be kind of a redo on my tutorial on how to set up a automated pneumaticraft seed farm using Steve's factory manager. Now, this is not just a crash landing thing. You can do this with any mod pack that has Steve's factory manager and pneumaticraft installed. Also, credit where credit due. Uh, credit is where credit due, I should say. The base design for this came from Landstrider, modified with uh, elements from Direwolf 20. Landstrider kind of had the basic setup idea with the redstone emitter and dispenser that I liked. And uh, someone else may have done it before him, but that's where I first saw it. And then uh, Direwolf 20 came up with an idea to compact it a bit using a block gate. So that was really cool, and I thought I would uh, show you guys how I would uh, how I set up mine in my test world. So first, what we're going to need to do is we'll kind of just... Uh, I didn't need to do that. Didn't need to do it there, though. We are just going to kind of do a... If I can place right, we're going to put a machine inventory manager and a chest. So for this, the better barrel is optional, um, but since we're in a crash landing world, this is going to assume you have a sieve set up and that you have your barrels on the same Steve's factory manager network so you can access them. Cool, cool. You need the block you're going to plant it on. Uh, this can be netherrack, uh, endstone water, dirt, grass. I'm going to use dirt just for this purpose. Chest, and then from Steve's factory manager, you need the machine inventory manager, you need the inventory cable, you need the redstone emitter, and you need a block gate, and then from vanilla, you need a good old dispenser. So, for this, our plant is going to go right here. And now, just because I don't want to interfere with this one at all, what we're going to do is fill in that hole. We are going to run an inventory cable over here. Coolio. We are going to put an emitter down here instead. A dispenser up here. And we're going to put a block gate this way. So as you can see here it's modular with each cell. Um, I like to leave a space between so it's a 3x3 three three modular area. You can expand it as much as you want. I don't like putting them right next to each other. Um, it's because with the way they explode, they might put something, you know, transmit something. So another thing what you could do is, you know, like kind of try and hide them a little bit in the ground. Like this. You could do that. Um, I would use glass here just so in case anything does pop up there's uh, no way for it to be planted. You also need to run an extra inventory cable up here unless you're using advanced cable clusters which in that case can take care of it in one cable but we are not using advanced cable clusters this is not a full-blown uh, Steve's factory manager tutorial. Let me get rid of this and I'm just gonna yeah that's fine I'm just doing it this way um, so you can see how it's done and you can do it early game. So in terms of our programming, because yes that's what you're doing, you need a trigger which I like to set to three seconds for this because to plant the pneumaticraft seeds takes a little bit of time, um, you know, to check for bone meal, whatever. It's just, you know, a little bit better. So then what we're going to do is we're going to create a conditional. Now this conditional is going to check our chest, doesn't matter what side you target, and the item we're going to look for is a slime plant seed. And we're going to do specific amount of 64, and we're going to do fuzzy detection. 
fuzzy detection will help take care of the metadata after the semicolon. I'm um, not going to go too much into that, but just know that's how this entire system works. Um, basically, when the Matacraft seeds get planted, this one is currently at a value of 1. When this one gets to a value of 6, you can see it at the top flash and with that really annoying uh, like coordinate thing. When that gets to 6, it's ready to be fully harvested. Now, where Landstrider's video was a little bit detrimental to making uh, for me to kind of automate it in my world, is there was a lot of individual programming going on. Direwolf20 solved that by using the block gate to kind of ignore the metadata, which is really cool. One other thing you need to know, you need to sort of prime the system. Uh, you need to have a seed on here to get it to work, so that's fine. Um, so yeah, when we come back here, this will check for 64 slime plant seeds. Now, if it does not have 64 slime plant seeds, we are going to go and we are going to check to see if our uh, block gate and we are facing the west. So I don't know if this matters, but for me, I just need to do it facing west. And we are going to require slime plant seeds and this one we are going to do a specific amount of two and fuzzy detection now the reason why we're using the block gate to check is like I was saying this ignores any kind of metadata that you're using fuzzy detection will check to see because the way the block gate works a little bit of instruction on it it's, its inventory is the inventory in front of it so when this breaks, it will drop one plant, slime plant seed. When it is ripe and ready for harvest, it will drop more than one plant, slime plant seed. So that's what this conditional checks for. If it will drop more than two, we're going to harvest it. Now this is where this design kind of... Uh, I, I'm not going to say uh, how, to, how to phrase this. This design, this makes this design more compact than land striders. Um, the dispenser and that over here make this more automated than Direwolf 20s. So both designs put together make a really, really powerful tool. Um, if I can spell right. There we go. So we'll just connect these two. We're not going to connect that one. If the condition is false, what we want to do is create our input. Now our input is going to check our barrel, doesn't matter what side, and we're going to check for a bone meal. And we're going to check for one. So that one bone meal. So basically what this condition means is if this one is not ready to be harvested, i.e. it will only drop one, we're going to get a piece of bone meal and this set is going to be basically bone mealing it until it's ready to be harvested. So with that bone meal you're going to send it with an output to the dispenser and you don't matter what side you can blacklist it. It doesn't matter what blacklist it is. Then the bone meal will go into the dispenser but it won't have anywhere to go because to run the dispenser you need to emit a redstone pulse. So to make sure we do that and we don't do too many we're gonna do a create a redstone emitter and we're gonna go toward uh, to get our emitter doesn't matter we can do all sides I just wanna do do emit pulse. So right here if it's not ready to be harvested It'll take a piece of bone meal from the barrel, put the barrel, uh, the bone meal into the dispenser, fire the redstone emitter below the dispenser to dispense the bone meal onto the plant, making the plant grow. Now this is nice because it doesn't matter how many, how random it is with the bone meal, it will go off of how many will drop when you, it's ready to be planted with the block gate. So this will work on all other crops, this will work on... Um, vanilla crops, Pam's Harvest crap, Craft props, uh, you might just need to add a crafting step in the middle to uh, put the seeds back um, and 
that also really wouldn't work the same because you can't plant them the same way pneumatocraft seeds plant. So you can make it work. It's just a little bit more finicky. I've done it. But, um, maybe I'll do a video for that. But I kind of just want to do this video right now. So that's what happens if it's not ready to plant. So if it is ready to plant, I'm going to change it up from the ways I did it in the last video. We're going to get our input from the block gate and we're gonna check the west side and we're gonna blacklist because we don't care what's over there because this makes it um, you'll notice that I really the only thing I really have to do is do slime plant seeds that's why um, I do so the only thing I need to change with this code is if I change this to a different plant seed all I need to do is change the slime plant seed all the other code remains the same, which is the way I need to design it. That's why this is a blacklist, and this condition is the one that checks to see what it is. Um, so, actually, that just gave me a completely new idea of the way to automate this, but we'll get we'll get into that later. Maybe later. I'm not sure. So, the block gate will be blacklisted. We are going to do an output I'm gonna put it in the chest first so I'm not gonna change it up from the way I did it before and then we're gonna create an input from that chest move it up here for a second and we're gonna take one of our slime plant seeds out of the chest so slime plant seeds we only want one and we want to fuzzy detect it. And then what it's going to do is it's going to output that back to the block gate. Uh, this one it doesn't matter what side it is. And then by doing that it'll automatically the block gate will spit it out and automatically replant it. So right there We'll check the dispenser. Now it's got a metadata to six. It's going to break it and put that block, uh, put it back out there. And then you'll see here, it'll just keep going and it'll break it and replant it. And we have an automated Steez Factory Manager Pneumaticraft Seed Automated Setup. That was a lot of words. Let's call this the. Uh, maybe I should leave it for the comments. What do you guys think we should call this thing? Um, if I, you'll, I'll make an announcement later on with an announcement video. Um, but I'm gonna be a little bit of a spoiler for you guys. Starting to try to do a let's play. You'll see that I was doing a cr crash landing. I kind of just want to switch over to a direwolf 20 and maybe do blood and bones. Um, don't get me wrong, I love crash landing. It's just I don't like it for a let's play personally. Um, but that's just me. I love the map. I love the, everything about it. It's just I, it doesn't agree with me for a let's play. Um, although people seem to be receptive to it, so maybe I'll do that too. I don't know. Wait for the announcement video. I need to plan this out before finals and whatnot. So, uh, yeah. I hope you guys had a good one. Until next time, this is Caller Eleven. Take it easy. Like, comment, subscribe if you liked it. If you thought I could do anything different, please let me know. Until next time, I will see you guys later.